Got my PJs on. Hello. song is that do you ever like need to know the name of a song but all you can think about are like the sounds that the song makes like how do i search for what is the song that goes found it that's not it from Shrek. Okay. Hey book besties, welcome back to another video. Today I am in rare form. I feel very hyper, I feel very energetic. I apologize in advance for what that means for the chaos that you are about to watch. I am like super concerned now. I just filmed a full video. If it goes up, if you see a video about the series on my TBR, then you know that I just got over it, but I just filmed a full video and I absolutely was appalled when I watched it back because the way the lighting was, my eyebrow was like, wah, wah, wah. like it was the most atrocious thing I've ever seen in my whole life and my confidence took a hit. I'm not gonna lie. So if I choose to put that on the internet, that is some self growth right there, ladies and gentlemen. So that was the sloppiest intro in the world, but today we are going to be talking about books that deserve more hype. I am like by myself at my house in my PJs and we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about some of the books that deserve way more freaking hype than they get and I don't understand why everyone isn't talking about these. Okay you guys, I literally have never in my life felt so defeated. I just filmed this entire video and it was in slow-mo and when I record in slow-mo on this camera it doesn't record any sound so there's like no way I could fix it but I really want to talk about these books so we're gonna start all over I'm gonna take a moment have a sip of water maybe get a cup a cup of coffee and fix my attitude because that is so frustrating but you still deserve to know about these books so give me a second I need to get my attitude in check and we'll be right back. But long story short, I'm like checking my eyebrows and because that was so bad. And I look in the mirror, I look at myself, I look at my spirit, I look at that, and then I record videos and my eyebrows like all kinds of monkey. You know what? Leave them um, just go with that. Your eyebrows are super crazy. If you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, book besties. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the 10 books that I think deserve more hype. So these are books that maybe they're talked about a little bit, but they just don't get the credit or the recognition or the hype that I think they deserve. So I'm going to be filling you in on some of the very best books that I've ever read that you may or may not know about. Anyways, for today's video, we're going to be talking about the 10 books that I think deserve way more hype. So I'm going to be putting you on some of the very best books that I've ever read that I don't think are talked about enough on social media, book talk, booktube, or in any general book recommendations. So I'm going to start with some that I think are the most common, most talked about, and I'm going to work my way to ones that I bet you may have not even heard about. First up is The Wish by Nicholas Sparks, and I know that Nicholas Sparks as a whole is a very popular author. Everyone knows Nicholas Sparks, everyone knows The Notebook, like I know that, but this book in particular does not get talked about nearly enough. I don't think I've ever seen somebody talk about this besides myself because I will talk about this until the end of time. Five star read for me. Absolutely amazing. This book is actually a dual timeline. It takes place in 1996 and also 2019 and it follows Maggie and in 1996 she becomes pregnant as a teenager and her family sends her away to live with her aunt on a small island off of North Carolina and I think it's in Outer Banks actually. Yeah. It's in Outer Banks and they send her to live with her aunt while she is growing her baby because they have a lot of shame around it. They are basically punishing her for getting pregnant as a teenager. So she goes to this island to live with her aunt and she meets Bryce who is pretty much the only other teenager on this island and they start to form a bond, a friendship, a connection and her walls are really up because like obviously she's going through this huge transition time, an unplanned teen pregnancy. Her family basically just owned her and shipped her across the country to live with an aunt that she barely knows. Like of course her walls are up, but slowly they start lowering for Bryce and she starts letting him in and they build a really 
really beautiful friendship. And then on the present day, Maggie is facing a terminal illness and she used to be a travel photographer, but now she is stationary. She owns her own art gallery because she can't travel as much with her illness. And in the present day, she is recalling her winter with Bryce in Outer Banks. Um, just the whole story I was just telling you, she's like recalling this story to her assistant at the art gallery and that's where like the flashbacks come in with the alternating timeline chapters. This book takes place at Christmas time and I think it'd be great if you wanted to read it at Christmas time. Definitely has some festive vibes but you definitely don't have to read it at Christmas time either. I think you could enjoy it just as much at any time of year. Like I said, I will take zero criticism on this book. This is a five star romance for me. I will shout it from the rooftops. I will not stop talking about it. I think this is my favorite Nicholas Sparks book ever. I love it. Amazing. Next is another author I know you know. That is Taylor Jenkins Reid and you've probably even heard of this book. It's After I Do and I am aware that this book is somewhat talked about but I wanted to include it in this video because even if you've heard of it, I don't think it gets the attention it deserves. Everyone knows Seven Husbands, everyone knows Daisy Jones, and for good reason, like I gave Daisy Jones five stars, I think it's amazing too. But this book isn't talked about nearly enough in my opinion. This is about Lauren and Ryan and they are a married couple and they're basically at their wits end. They're at their breaking point with their marriage and they decide to do something kind of unusual, unconventional, and they take a one year break from their marriage. So they have no rules. You can do whatever you want, you can do anything, you can basically, act like you're single for a year, the only rule they set is that they absolutely cannot contact each other. So this book has some really deep themes in it. It explores like true love and soulmates and the real meaning of marriage and like what it means to different people. And you follow Lauren as she kind of struggles with this break from the man that she's in love with and her husband. And like, does she miss him? Does she want him back? Is she liking her independence? And something unique about this book is how much I love the side characters. Like I fell in love with the sister. There's a grandma in this book that I just loved as well. This is just, I think one of her very best books in my personal opinion, and I don't think it is talked about nearly enough. Up next is another romance and that is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This book is basically about two people that end up sharing an apartment together. They live together, but their schedules never overlap. So they have conflicting schedules, so they're never in the apartment at the same time. But it's a super teeny apartment. They have like the same bed, they're sharing the same living space, and they start to communicate and connect with each other through handwritten notes that they leave around the house. And like, of course, you start to know the other person just because you're living with them. Like you see the things that they're leaving around the house, you see what they're cooking for dinner, and they start to build this friendship without ever really meeting in person. This book was quirky, it was cute, it was, a little bit cheesy but in all the best ways and I can't remember if there was spice in this book I just remember really really enjoying it and I thought the characters were super lovable and yes this is like a four probably a four star romance for me and I've seen this mentioned a couple times but not nearly as much as I think it should be this is an absolutely amazing book I just I loved it I think everyone should read it I have three more romances I want to mention and the first one is The Infinity Between Us and this may have been like hyped up a couple years ago before I was really big into book talk and booktube, but this book is like basically the same vibes as Every Summer After and Love in Other Words, but it doesn't get nearly the same amount of attention in my opinion. This book is childhood or I guess teenage friends to lovers, second chance, summer romance, and dual timeline. So super similar as you can tell to Every Summer After, but I liked this one better because I absolutely hated the conflict in Every Summer After. Like that book was set to be a five star read for me until the conflict. If you know, you know, I just, it was really disappointing to me. Um, and this book obviously didn't have the same conflict. And so I actually really enjoyed this one probably even more so, but it's not talked about nearly as much in my opinion. I think that I've seen Every Summer After everywhere and no one really talks about the infinity between us. So definitely worth mentioning. So this book follows two people who first met at summer camp and they formed a connection, a relationship, and then also in the present day after something unknown has happened we kind of get this like looming conflict that no one really talks about explicitly until the end um, where they are reconnected. He gets hired as a security guard at her father's 
company that she is working for and like one day going to take over. But we get the dual, dual timeline back and forth, the summer camp and then present day. It's just a really fun story. It's definitely a great like summer read if you need like a lighthearted romance to pick up and finish pretty quickly. I think it was worth mentioning because I haven't heard anyone else talk about it and I thought it was really good. Two more romances and first I want to talk about Things You Save in a Fire by Katherine Center. I am a Katherine Center fan. It started with The Bodyguard and after this book I am like a solid fan. This is a workplace romance, firefighter romance, so they are both firefighters and there's really deep underlying themes of gender equality, uh, female empowerment, morality, illness, family ties, like there's just a lot packed into this book. And Catherine Center really does that. She takes like the outline of a cheesy rom-com and makes it deep and makes it really touching and really powerful. And this book is no exception and I have literally never ever seen this book talked about ever in my life. I actually went to the Catherine Center like section in my library and I saw this book and I was like hmm, that's interesting. I really like The Bodyguard so I'll pick it up. I fell in love with it. I don't know why it's not talked about more because I gave this book four out of five stars and I thought it was really really amazing. Oh, I need more water. So the last romance I want to talk about is Seven Days in June and if you have followed me for any amount of time you've probably heard me talk about this before. This book follows two authors, so that's always kind of fun to have the bookish element. Um, it's a second chance romance. It does take place in the summer, so it could be a really fun summer read. It has deeper themes, deeper underlying meaning. There's a single parent trope. She has a chronic illness. Like there's a lot. There's a lot of morality, um, family relationships. Like there's a lot packed into this book. And it's an emotional one. Like it's one of the romances that has really stuck with me where I felt like the characters were real complex humans and I fell in love with them and I fell in love with their story and I fell in love with their relationship and this is a romance that I just will still think about to this day but not enough people talk about it. It is so 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 good. If you have not read The Seven Days in June you definitely need to. That's like your homework assignment. Go pick it up. Go read it because it is amazing. Now I want to move into some fiction books. So first I want to talk about Small Great Things and this was pretty popular a couple years ago but it kind of like fell off the hype wagon and I think it should be put, put back on because this book is a five star read for me. It's one of the only books that has made me like actually cry physical tears. This book is about a black nurse and she is given strict instructions that she is not allowed to touch a baby that she is meant to help deliver because she is black. And then later on she finds herself in a situation where this baby needs emergency life-saving medical care and she's the only nurse in the room. So obviously she's faced with the huge dilemma of like I'm legally not allowed to touch this baby but also like if I don't touch this baby the baby's gonna die. So you learn about what she chooses to do, the follow-up court case afterwards, um, and there's just a lot packed into this. You get different perspectives, you get different points of view. Wow. This is a deep book, this is a rich book, like I said, made me cry, and it's to this day a five-star read for me. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. I have two more kind of general fiction. So first is Water for Elephants and this book is actually, it's been turned into a movie with Reese Witherspoon so you may have heard of that. I actually read this book in college and don't ask me why. I ended up taking a class on circuses, like literal circuses, and I have no idea why. Like my major was media and communication studies. Why that was a class that I had to take, I, I don't know. But it led me to this book so whatever it's fine. This book is amazing and it really just follows a circus, a traveling circus and you get to know the characters on a really deep emotional level. You see kind of the behind the scenes of circus workers and how they're treated, how the animals are treated. There's a lot of emotion in this book. Um, so interpersonal connection and relationships. There's like addiction, there's trauma. Check the trigger warnings for this because there are, like I said, some pretty deep things covered. This book as a whole is, I think, really amazing and I loved it. I did. I thought it was great, which is strange because usually assigned reading is a no-go for me. Like once it's assigned, I won't like it, but I really did. This was good. Actually, another book that I read in college, this was for a class called Bad Girls and American Lit and it was the most fun class ever. We read Bunny which has grown to be really popular which is kind of cool because I read it years ago. 
Um, and we also read Gone Girl, which is one of my favorite books by Gillian Flynn. But that's The Mars Room. So we read this and this is about the prison system. It follows Romy Hall and she's at the start of two consecutive life sentences. This is about the bond of the prisoners in the prison system, how the prisoners interact with the guards, how the guards treat the prisoners. Um, it really unpacks a lot of stuff and if you're interested in Orange is the New Black or if you've ever watched that show and enjoyed it, this is a book that I think you would really really like. I have literally never seen this book talked about anywhere besides my college class and I don't know why because I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was really captivating, really engaging. It's a page turner. It was good. I really liked it. And then this last book, I actually have to look up the title for it because I always get it wrong. In a cottage in a wood. I always want to say like a cabin in the woods, in a cottage in the woods. Like I always get the words just off. But In a Cottage in a Wood by Cass Green. This is a thriller I accidentally picked up. Well, I shouldn't say accidentally. I went to look for a book by John Green because I was like, I, I love The Fault in Our Stars. Maybe I should revisit John Green. This was on the shelf next to it and I was like, ooh, that looks intriguing, that looks creepy. So I picked it up, took it home, I read it all in one day. Sat down, cover to cover, finished this book. It's a relatively short thriller, it's like 320 pages and it blew me away. It was amazing, I think I gave it four stars. Um, I like this book more than some of the super hyped up thrillers that I've read. Not gonna name names, but oh, I'm just kidding. But I think that this book deserves to be talked about and I haven't heard anybody talk about it. It's creepy, it leaves you like looking over your shoulder because it just is eerie and ugh. Also I recommend checking trigger warnings because it definitely starts in a very intense way that could be triggering. Um, so check that out, but overall this book was really amazing and I don't see anybody talking about it, so I had to put you on, I had to tell you about it. Those are the 10 books that I don't see talked about nearly enough that I think deserve way more hype than they get. Question of the video, leave a comment down below telling me one book that you think is absolutely amazing that deserves way more hype than it gets. Is there a book that you just want to like shout from the rooftops and tell everybody about and you feel like no one else is talking about it and you just want to broadcast it to the world that this book is amazing or maybe you're kind of a gatekeep girly and you're trying to keep this book for yourself but we don't gatekeep here bestie leave it down below and let me know a book that is not talked about enough that I probably haven't read that you fell in love with and thought was absolutely amazing and everyone should read it that's all I have for you today I am now filming this video for the second time so I'm hopeful that this one is good after my eyebrow incident that I just described, my filming incident, and now this. Hopefully third time's the charm. I am going to go try to edit this and we'll see. If it makes it to YouTube, hallelujah, everything went okay. But that's all for today. Thanks for hanging out with me as always. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos and I will catch you in the next one. And for the third time today, bye book besties.